All right, everyone, so entering episode four right now, we currently are showing what we had last week for our deck. We had two Cyber Eltan and three Cyber Dragon, two Cyber Dragon Dry, three Reflect Bounder, two Cyber Phoenix, two the Light Hex Sealed Fusion, three Cyber Dragon Core, two Cyber Dragon Nashter, three Cyber Dragon Hers, two Power Bond, three Evolution Burst, two Machine Duplication, two Cyber Repair Plant, three Mystical Space Typhoon, three Limiter Removal, one Cyber Load Fusion, two Waboko, two Dimensional Prisons. And then for the extra deck, three Cyber Twin Dragon, one Cyber End Dragon, three Cyber Dragon Nova, and one Cyber Dragon Infinity. All right, so for this week, we're going to be pulling the Light Hex Sealed Fusion and Cyber Phoenix out of the main deck and swap them with one fusion deployment and one cyber rev system. Fusion deployments to help get us out of cyber dragon a little quicker if we need to and cyber rev system is to basically to protect them should one of them ever go into the graveyard. And then for the three remaining cards that we'll be adding in, as mentioned last week, one cyber dragon seeger, a second copy of cyber dragon infinity, and one divine double a Zeus sky thunder. Sky thunder is the one card that did take the majority of my budget this week. Obviously I still have plenty left but you know $20 even at the low cost that he was at the time I bought him and by that I mean within the last month or so he still took quite a bit but it should be a good card to have gonna leave this infinity for proof of our upgrades so other upgrades that we're doing this week bumping the three super rares of cyber dragon hers up to ultra rares of cyber dragon hers possibly including this power bond for one of ours however I'm not sure if I might have to send it back to the seller depending if he ever responds cuz look at that damage this was supposed to be near mint, by the way. Massive bubbling and just denting and... And there's this little nick up top. While it's not a massive thing, you know, the fact that he's taken forever to respond and he wanted pictures and I sent them a while back, like three days now, uh, is sort of annoying. I might be including that one, I might not. We're gonna upgrade our other dark Cyber Dragon Infinity up to this version as well. Going to be bumping up one of our Cyber Twin Dragons up to the Secret Rare version. Our Common Cyber Load Fusion. Our Common Cyber Load Fusion will be switched up to this Ultra Rare version. And then our two Common Machine Duplications up to a nice foil Super Rare version. Doesn't look like much obviously in this lighting, however, you can definitely see the foil, so. And that is all our swaps and rarity bumps, so now let us get into this week's duels. A few moments later. Before we get into the duels though, I did forget last week to include the prices of the cards that we added into the deck, so I'm making sure to do it this week. So again, for our Double Zeus, for our second copy of Infinity, our one copy of Seeger, one Fusion Deployment, and Rev System. All the prices will be included on screen, and now let us get into the duels. Four to six days later. Alright everyone, so it's time for the duels. As you can see here, we are going against my Lordy of Lords deck that I had made a long time ago. This is just using the three structure decks of the Sacred Lords. They go first. I mean, the AI doesn't really apparently know how to run this deck extremely well. They can pop off a little here and there, but they do make some bad decisions as playing. I mean, two Cerulean ain't that bad, especially with uh, Haman in hand, but I just use this, get my rev system, pop. I forgot what, what did I have? Oh yeah, fall, fall, the Fallen Paradise. and end up making Zeus at the end, because I did some damage. Do make a misplay with Zeus. I don't remember which uh, duel it was, but I accidentally activated its effect twice. I'm pretty sure it's either this one or the next one. Nope, I think it's, yeah, right here. There it goes, uh, messed up twice. So, woo! Because it asked if I want to activate a, uh, another effect, so I thought, oh, maybe it meant the other one. No, I shouldn't have thought it meant that. But anyways, with Zeus and uh, Cyber Twin Dragon, we just finished the match right, uh, the duel right there. Obviously, misplays happened. Uh, it was the first time I've actually used Zeus in EDO Pro, so, you know, learning, learning curve there is uh, sort of needed. However, let us get in a duel too, where again, I think they go first. Yep. So activate Spirit Gates, which is always a good opener. They get Fallen Paradise, then activate that as well. Chaos Summoning Beast. See, they should have stopped at Raviel, to be honest. They would have had quite a monster to get over, and I probably wouldn't have been able to. At least for a little bit. Actually, to be fair, I, I would have been able to, but my Cyber Dragon would have ended up dying at the end of turn. Or would it? I don't know how uh, Rev System works with limited removal, if I'm being completely honest. Like, 
Would the effect still destroy it at the end of turn, or would it be protected because of Rev System? Anyways, it destroyed my Seeger and, uh, Seeger and give me Radiant, which honestly is a power bump in a way. But also damaging because, you know, 4200 would help get over such things as Raviel, Haman, and so forth. And Chaos Core is a bane of this duel. Its effect allows it basically to protect it once per turn. But that's why I just summon out hers, attack it once, it activates effect, and then have Radiant just run over it. But had I not had a second monster, you know, that would have been uh, troublesome. But, you know, it comes right back anyways. So. I'll activate Repair Plan, get a Nashter, so we can bring back, I believe, Cyber Dragon. Yep. Power Bond into End Dragon, and, you know, that's 8,000 and, uh, End of Duel. But let's make it 16, why not? Sorry, a little bit of a nose issue today. So, yeah, I mean... Match one went pretty well, 2-0. Obviously, if a human was uh, running my Lordy of Lords deck, it probably would have went completely different. But the AI likes to overplay, uh, I've learned. Which is unfortunate because I do, I do want to show that the deck can do things. And um, here is the Dark World Danger, or Danger Dark World deck. And honestly, again, if they didn't over overplay, they would have had quite... Quite the presence on the field there. So, I mean, just look how well it pops off. And this I, is not even one I've been able to make myself because I don't have all the uh, cash cards. But yeah, it was like one of the end goals I had for the deck. Like if I ever were to invest a little bit into those. But and then if it had kept access code talker again, fifty three hundred is nothing to scoff at. So that would have been a huge troublesome card to get over, but then they threw it into the uh, other Link 4 there. I forget what that one's called. Alright, let's get uh, Infinity out. And then suck it up. And boom, almost all the way gone in one turn. Well, one battle, I should say, not turn. Because that was uh, my second. So let's go into our third. I was trying to see if I could get a Seeger out, but it kept trying to force me to use Infinity for the second material, and I was like, nah, bruh. We're not doing that. We're keeping Infinity out just in case I need it. Because I know there's a lot I can negate in the Dark World deck, so I didn't want to overplay like the AI likes to. Oh, okay, so I had to go first this time. Obviously, I just threw everything down in case it wants to pop some, uh, some things and hope that it misses others. So... But Reflect Bounder, you know, good. Especially if you use Limiter Removal on it. Because then even Bigfoot can't get past that. Except I think he's going to overplay into the one monster card again. Yep, there it is. I guess it has an effect of banish cards, and then every card that got banished by that effect comes right back. So. And because I knew Reflect Bounder was going to die at end of turn anyways, I activated my limited removal in order to kill the monster and have them take more damage than they would have otherwise. And just so I had something, I said screw it, and instead of just putting it in defense mode, I thought, hey, you know, 100 attack, why not? Normally wouldn't be a great idea to do that, but, you know, it worked. And then it gets me my Cyber Dragon, so I can special summon that card. And then some normal summon core, followed by the rev system, so I can pop this, uh, I believe. Yep, Seeger. And then pull back Cyber Dragon with rev. And now it is protected, remember that, because it's going to come up here in a turn or two. I don't remember exactly when. But he's going to destroy, he's, it's going to try to destroy my Cyber Dragon with something, but it cannot. So. Cyber Dragon keeps me protected for a while, which is great. I could have used Evolution Burst again, but I do more damage because IP Masquerade can only use its effect during a main phase. I think this is when it tries to use the effect. Uh, let's find out. Yep, that's where it tried, but it can't, so... 
See, rev system can prove useful at times, so always try to have at least one in your deck when possible. I wouldn't try to have more than that. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to, but it could end up clogging your hand much like Power Bond did in our earlier episodes. So let's uh, pull out a, you know, Cyber Twin and just finish. Boom. Match number two done. 2-0 two as well. So as I mentioned last week, uh, I did play Sin Eater with my week four deck. So this is still his week one, or episode one, I should say, for him. Yes, I'm saying I'm a lot, but that's because I'm sort of thirsty. But anyways, so don't judge his deck too harsh because this is where he actually started learning how to use his and I, I make a huge miss. I just don't even play apparently in the second match, uh, second duel, so spoiler there. Because there's so much more I could have done and for some reason I didn't and I don't know why. I think that's because I didn't understand Rev System at the time because this was obviously before I understood exactly what it did and how I could work it. But... So, I mean, he, his field presence is pretty good, to be honest. And if he had just, like, another card or two, I'm sure he could have easily stopped a lot of what happened here. But the only problem with Crystal Beast is sometimes, if you can't get them to the main field like that, they do sort of clog your back row to the point that you can't always activate everything you need. I mean, he only has Ash Blossom in hand, I didn't know that, but... So then we'll just have a Cyber Twin just kill everything. And then here we go, duel number two of match three, like I already spoiled in the previous portion. I do, for some reason, not even remotely play here. I don't know why. I, I don't know what I was thinking. It was, I think, I don't know how many matches we played prior to this, but it was towards the later, because there's some I didn't even save because I wasn't planning on doing my week four. Luckily I did, so at least I had someone I played against. Hopefully we'll be able to play him again here very soon with his updated form. And look at that. Look, I had so much in my hand. Like, why did I not play any of it, man? I really don't know. I could have played Refect Bounder. I could have had Rev System summon out my Cyber Dragon. I could have then went into Twin. I have no idea. But anyways, duel number three, final round. He plays out his uh, Tiger and obviously the Crystal Master, which is always a pain in the butt. So we will just Power Bond into Cyber Twin. I don't think that was a great idea because yeah, there it goes, it gets shuffled back in. However, luckily I can still play things, so. That is the one plus side of this deck over some of the other ones I have made. I can still push through certain things happening. And Seeger and Cyber Twin are nothing to scoff at either. That's 4,200 over half the health already gone. So, and then Pink Panther obviously tries to do direct damage, and obviously it will. I just want to activate Seeger's effect, because why not at this point? Phoenix will kill, get me a draw. But it's not needed, because that is the end of round three. So match three, we ended up winning 2-1. Hopefully, again, we get to play him again soon, because I actually enjoyed interacting with him. He, he's a pretty cool duelist, and I will have his video linked in one of these videos whenever he makes it go live, as well as if you want to look at my main page, it is linked there in the Awesome People. And here is our final form of this deck. Obviously, everything from the main and extra, the side deck is covered. There's a lot that is going to be changing next week. I will be adding in five new cards, two of which will be in the extra deck. The other three, I do have to figure out what ones I want to swap out. I still want to eventually get rid of Mystical Space and Evolution Burst. However, they are still proving way too useful in certain duels. So I don't know if I can actually do that. I think. Oh yeah. Also, I will be doing the Cyber Jar Challenge, where I do have to try to activate the effect in a duel, preferably against a human player. But if I can activate it four times against the AI, I'll still count that as a win. So there's that. Looking forward to too. I think that might actually end up screwing me more often than not. But hey. And thank you to the community members: uh, Justine Rubel, Deadpoo, Allison Johnson, Chad the Squirrel, Loki Otison, and Jasmine Ripley for still being subscribed. It means a lot. And uh. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and see you next week. All right, guys. Peace.